All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Big Data Paris, and uh, look who are with me, the CEO and co-founder of Dinmo, Osama. Welcome to the Robert Show. Thanks, Robert, for the invitation. Uh, I've seen you all at Big Data London. I met your team there, and absolutely enjoyed learning more about Dinmo. And today, you're at Big Data Paris. I'm kind of curious to learn more about uh, what's happening at Dinmo. What are y'all? Uh, building and how you all helping the enterprise world out there. Yeah. Or somehow, just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about uh, a little about Dinmo as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'm Osama. I'm the CEO and founder of Dinmo, a venture I built. I started in 2022 after nice. spending 10 years in the data space, uh, acting as chief data officer advising many companies on how to build data capabilities yep. and how to leverage their customer data to better address their customers. Uh, and yeah, I saw a gap between uh, what was happening, like in the ability to build data foundation, or centralize all the data, etc. People are becoming more and more uh, capable of doing this, but marketing teams were not able to leverage all this data to personalize their communi communication with their customers. So. I thought I had this idea like of building this bridge between the customer data and the people that will use this data. And yeah, it, we started the, with a simple reverse CTL and yeah. then we developed the platform to reach a composable CDB and maybe we'll, we'll have the chance to dig deep in yes. the concept of composable CDB. Yes, I'm curious about that as well and uh, thanks for sharing that. I'm kind of, you know, today I have, uh, I'm thinking about breaking it down for our audience in depth. Uh, so. Uh, can you tell us about what is customer data platform and why do you need one? <laughs> Good question for a starter. And honestly, <laughs> like this space is so noisy. Right. So you know, I can have a lot of players. So everyone is speaking about about it uh, in in very complex way. Exactly. And most decision decision makers uh, they don't get all the parts that you need to have in a CDP. So, so to make it simple, we need. Companies need a CDP, especially in the B2C space, because they need to address their customers in a personalized way. You know, right. like you have this, you have the same customers as Netflix. So, if your customers are watching Netflix series the at night, they would expect the same level of personalization from you, a brand or retailer. So, exactly. you need to have like the same level of personalization. True. But the problem is that leveraging customer data, the knowledge about the customer, is not that easy that it may seem. Very so, right? yeah, so it's not like the CRM manager hates you and that's why he he sends you like a lot of mails that are not personalized. It's that the fact that they don't have access to this data. Right. So the concept, the first concept of CDP is giving people who will talk to, to, to the customers, CRM manager, acquisition managers, access to customer 306, which means all the information about your customers, what they have done in the past, their transaction, what did they do in your product, etc. And they can leverage this, all of this data to build customer segments, to build some attributes, and then use Very them important. To, to personalize any communication. When you come to the website, see the relevant products for based on your past purchase behavior, for example. Or send you only mails when you need to see them because you need like to get the new product, etc. So this is the concept, like making the data accessible in the tool that people use to personalize the communication with their customers. Very interesting, and uh, thanks for sharing that. I'm also uh, wanting to know a little about the composable approach, right? Uh, so how is this approach different? But at the same time, what is it? Yeah, okay, so historically, um, the main function of CDP was the data centralization, the ability to get all the data from different places put them together, so build like a data warehouse. But during the five last years, we have seen companies like Snowflake, Databricks, like Simplif and also they are Five Friend, uh, Wivery, those companies simplified this task of getting the data from different sources, putting it together, uh, modeling it the, the right way so it can be consumable. So a part of the function of the CDP is being internalized within companies. Yeah. So yeah. companies now like have those data, but they lack some features to build their own CDP. And those features is the ability to segment the data and enrich it with predictive AI, for example, knowing when your customer will come back, when do you need like to talk to them, which products do you need to, you know, like recommend to them so they can, you can increase the chance they, they buy. Right. And this is like the main uh, difference is that we don't store data. We think right. that's like the company's res responsibility. So they build it internally with yeah. analytics engineers, 
leveraging the modern data stack, all those tools, Dataverse, Snowflake, Google Cloud Platform, and we come and connect natively to this single source of truth, this customer 360, and give the rest of the features that they don't already have. So segmentations, enrichment with predictive AI, and then the ability to sync this data to all the platforms that they have, whether it's a CRM, whether it's like uh, advertising tools or yep. tools to personalize the experience on the website. Yeah, what I'm hearing is obviously the 10 years of experience that you've had in enterprise, you're, you've kind of found so many gaps, Sama. Yeah. And uh, I can see the passion in terms of you know filling that gap for the enterprise leaders out there, which is great. Uh, also, curious question around you know the foundation. So, how do you lay a foundation uh, for a composable CDP? Is something what I'm interested to learn a little. Yeah, more. I think. When people start thinking about yeah personalization, etc., you know, like they, they think of the the tip of the iceberg, you know, uh, right. it's it's but they are like at the level zero. So we can jump from zero to one directly. So laying the foundations means that you are able to get all the data that you have yes. within a central place, within a snowflake, within a data bricks. Once you have it, you can just plug in and start using it. Like so, start right away. So the 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 the, the main idea is like that you need to get serious about your data. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you, don't, you, you don't need like to wait for a tool, for a magic tool that will solve all the problems for you. There, there is no magical tool that will solve the, the, <laughs> the data centralization, etc. So yeah. people need to get serious about their data. Maybe hire first analytics engineer to get this data, put it in a central place, and then start using the uh, implementing the use cases with Dinmo. Yeah, those are very important points that you mentioned about. It's not gonna happen magically. You need to have the right tool and the yeah. right fit for your need, right? So that's awesome. I'm also curious to know a little about you know the data transformation bit. So how yeah. does that happen from data warehouse to composable, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, CDP? Yeah. The so analytics engineers and companies have already centralized this data, so they. They, they're able to show things on dashboards, right. uh, see some information that, uh, you know, like CRM managers, they are the same users of the dashboards. So they will start seeing, you know, like some analysis on dashboards, etc., and asking questions. And then they will come to the data team and say, I wanted the same data in my CRM, you know? Uh, how, how, how to get it? Like, uh, right. And this is like the role of Denmo, is the ability to say, okay, the same data that is powering this dashboard, this analysis, I'm able to get it within my CRM. And they will get to the, to, to the Dinmo platform. Right. The data team will connect this data, uh, the, this data set, and then the marketing team will act in, in self-serve mode, so they can not, not write SQL or anything. They build their own segment. They can even do it in natural language now, now with the integration of AI. And then in two clicks, just choose the platform where, you want, where they want to have this, and Dinmo will deal with, every, with all the complexity of getting the data from the data warehouse, putting it in the CRM or any other platform so they can focus only building the right audience and then how to treat this audience in, uh, in the different platforms like CRM, etc. This is awesome. You're like kind of easing up things for uh, the you know the enterprise leaders out there in many which ways, and for the marketers, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, Osama, one last question for you is about if folks want to reach out. Uh, actually, this is my second last question, not the <laughs> last one. Um, so I'm going to ask you about first thing is what's next that we, uh, we can expect yeah. at Dinmo. What's yeah. next big thing that's coming up, uh, yeah. and uh, how are you you're looking at that? Yeah. We think that the industry of CDP is going to move because, not especially uh, thanks to AI, because people would be expecting to have um, everything that they need for a certain task and right. recommend it to them. So they don't need like only tools, and they need like to figure out how to use the tools. So we see there is like a big opportunity for companies just to focus on getting their data modeled, well structured in infrastructure like Snowflake, like Databricks, like GCP, and then plugging in. Dinmo and giving Dinmo information about their business, their main goals, and we will leverage a lot of types of AI, predictive AIs, recommendation engines, etc., and we will give them everything they need to personalize the experience mm. of their customers. Will basically one of the use cases uh, is, for example, saying, uh, "Yeah, for this customers, you you, uh, you need like to send him an email at this date, and uh, you need like to." to push him this product, etc. So the, it, the platform would, would work on autopilot and give recommendations right. so they can reach 
the level of one-to-one -one personalization. So each customer is, is really unique and they, uh, you know, uh, they leave a lot of data points. So they come to the website, they interact with you on a lot of channels and they would expect that you leverage all this data exactly. to talk to them like the white way, you know, like the Netflix, uh, true. The Netflix way. True, true, <laughs> no, I love and, it. Uh, and yeah. I think we can bring this innovation to many, like, you know, brick and mortar companies, like more traditional companies like retailers, because it's, it's, it's just a way of leveraging all those technologies and abstracting it for uh, enterprises. I like it. Uh, thanks for sharing uh, about a little about the future, about what are you kind of looking yeah. at as well. We're not uh, so far. It's not yeah. the future. The future is now. Yes, the <laughs> future is now. You're right. Um, uh, one more curious question, and I'm pretty sure the audience would love to know about that, is if folks want to reach out to you, learn more about uh, yeah. what Stinmo is doing, uh, where can they do that? Yeah. Uh, is uh, LinkedIn a best place or any other place? We are everywhere our customers are. So we are on events, uh, yep. we're participating to the big data. We'll be at the Snowflake Summit, the Databricks one, the, GC, the Google Next. So we can reach out to us during events, but especially we are on, uh, we are, there's our, our website and there's our, uh, my LinkedIn. I talk a lot about LinkedIn yep. to educate the market, etc. So feel free to awesome. reach out to us. So, Osama, first of all, thanks for visiting the Robert Show. Thanks for sharing all the great insights. I'm pretty sure we'll meet at different places. We'll keep the conversation going. Uh, and I know your booth is kind of getting busy now. So, <laughs> I'll, <are> waiting. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll let you uh, obviously talk to them. But uh, such a pleasure again to meet you and chat with you. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. It was a great pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.